Hello, tree and forest friends. I'm Dr. David Merker, Extension Forester with the University of Tennessee, and welcome back to another session of Back Porch Forestry. As you can see, we're not on the back porch today. The dog days of summer are set in, and so I've moved this presentation inside. Typically, these presentations deal a lot with forestry and timber production. But periodically, I like to take a break from that and just talk about trees in general, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, going to be addressing the topic of tree growth characteristics. So let me share uh, the presentation as we get started. We are into our fourth year of Back Porch Forestry and I certainly appreciate your, the support that you've given uh, through the years with this. So the presentation title as was alluded to is Tree Growth Characteristics. Um, this session of Back Porch Forestry was created to explain how trees grow. And we're going to look specifically at, at, at four things that are kind of complicated, but I'll try to keep it as, as simple as I can. We're going to look at primary versus secondary growth. We'll, we will study the allocation of energy within trees, some shoot growth patterns, and then finally we'll close just with some uh, interesting uh, uh, different types of crown shapes, basically. So we need to differentiate as we get started the difference between primary growth and secondary growth. Primary growth is that growth that occurs on the tips of the branches and or the roots. So this is called the apical meristem region. So it's growth that occurs as the crown expands and as the roots expand outward and downward. Secondary growth occurs only after primary growth has occurred. And that's the growth that occurs in the girth or the thickness essentially of a stem or a root. So we've got primary growth and secondary growth. Here's an example of what I mean by, by, by each of these. Um, if you look in the left photo, um, primary growth occurs beginning of the, the growing season, the terminal bud was right there. And as the day lengths increase and temperatures became warmer, uh, that bud flushed, it uh, grew. And from that emerged various leaves. These happen to be maple leaves that are opposite of each other on, on the branch. But this section right here is called the primary growth. And like I said, the same occurs on the roots as well. Um, the health of a tree is closely correlated with how, how, uh, how much growth is occurring on the terminal end of the branches, this primary growth. It, when a tree is in decline, um, what you'll notice is that the primary growth tends to shrink and shrink until such points that point that doesn't occur at all. Secondary growth then is this growth in the girth. You know that, we know that as an, the annual growth rings and you can see the growth rings there. And so this is what I mean when I talk about secondary growth. Well, continuing with primary growth now, leaves develop in really in one of two different types of arrangements. They can either be alternating or they can be opposite. So. Trees uh, with alternate arrangements, essentially they develop one at a time with one leaf at each node. So that would be the leaf. This is the petiole or the stalk of the leaf. And the point where this petiole attaches to the stem is called the node. In this case, you'll see that the, the leaves are alternating back and forth on the stem. Um, and I, in, in, uh, in comparison to that, we've got opposite growth arrangement. And that's a situation where the, the leaves develop two leaves at each node opposite each other, excuse me, opposite each other. Sometimes they could be three uh, in the case of a world arrangement. So here we have the maple, as I mentioned earlier, and you notice that the leaves are opposite each other. So alternate versus opposite um, leaf arrangement. That's the node in, that I referred to earlier. Now, Terminal versus lateral buds. Terminal buds occur on the end of the tip of the branch, essentially. That's where the growth the following growing season will, will begin. That's the terminal bud. Then um, at the base, uh, right, right above each node where the leaf attaches, you'll see these lateral buds form. And these buds will be, be, become branches next year from which leaves will emerge. So that's terminal versus lateral buds. Now, when leaves fall off in, in autumn, they're gonna leave a scar behind. And so that's what I mean by the scar right, right there. And um, above the scar then is this lateral bud that I'm referring to. 
uh, that grows into a branch. And then rings around the stem are formed where scars uh, once, where the terminal bud once was. That's the bud scar, in other words. That's where the, the, uh, the, the, the primary growth began, it began in the growing season. And you'll see this particularly in trees where they have preformed growth. And I'll explain that to you shortly. So just to reiterate, there's your scar. That's where the leaf was. That's the bud. And this is a bud scar for the terminal bud. First, second, and third order lateral branches. So we have the tree. Um, you want to be very careful when trying to prune because we want to prune uh, the third or even fourth order lateral branches first, as little as possible, in other words. And so you'll hear arbors sometimes talk about this first, second, third order lateral branches. Um, and this is in what we call a dichotomous branching form. Now, a little bit on, on secondary growth. Again, this is the growth in diameter. We've addressed this in the past, but directly below the bark is a thin layer called the cambium layer. And the cambium is where uh, cell division occurs, mitosis. And so in the spring of the year, it produces two types of cells, the cambium does. It produces new xylem, which is essentially new wood. The function of xylem is to carry water and nutrients up to the leaves. So we say xi high. But the cambium also produces a new bark each year, which is called phloem. And the function of phloem is to carry the sugars that have been produced in the crown down to the rest of the tree so that living cells can stay alive and that growth can occur. And so here's the growth rings we, we refer to, and that's one year's growth ring. Now each year as wood is produced, it will produce um, early wood first, followed by late wood. Early wood is in the spring of the year, essentially. Typically the pores will be uh, larger and really carrying the water up so that the leaves can flush and begin what they need to do. And then later in the growing season, this growth uh, begins to uh, slow down. Uh, typically that you'll see a darker ring form uh, in the light wood. Here's a, an example again with xylem, water is going up. So that would be the xylem, xylem region. We might call that sapwood and this is heartwood. And then the phloem right here with the sugar is coming down. There's your cambium right between the two, that vascular cambium. Well, a word about ring porous versus diffused porous trees. This is an example of ring porous uh, trees where you can actually see the growth rings very, very distinctly. If you look closely, you'll see the pores right there. Uh, and then uh, each year, of course, it produces another, another growth ring. We don't have that with diffused pores. They, they produce rings, but they're just much more challenging to see. Um, and I believe I've got an example of that. that. Here's, a, here's an oak. Yeah, this is what I want to show, show. This is the oak, and you'll see the, the distinct rings there. Some trees are semi-ring pores where you can begin to sort of see a ring and then diffuse porous woods that's even more challenging to see, particularly once the wood's been finished and that's uh, maybe made into cabinets or some furniture or something. And some, some consumers prefer that more of this ring forest look to it where you have more of a grain pattern. Others prefer wood that's uh, without much grain pattern. Well, <clears throat> the energy for tree growth, of course, we know, we learned this in, in high school, grade school science photosynthesis. And that's the process of converting the sun's energy uh, in, in company with water and carbon dioxide into sugar. And so these are the three inputs. And of course, sugar is the output as well as oxygen. And sugar then is used to provide energy for leaves, uh, for respiration, which is keeping living cells alive. It's used for promoting that primary growth we talked about, the flowering and fruit production, of course, a lot of carbohydrates are in a, an acorn or an apple for that matter. And then of course it's used for secondary growth as we, we have alluded to. So trees must overproduce sugar for the use uh, in the winter months because there's no sugar being produced during the winter months. So let's, uh, let's talk about then sustained versus preformed growth. Now sustained growth is when the primary growth is continuous throughout the growing season. So leaves can continue to flush and flush and flush and flush as long as the conditions are right. So trees take advantage of favorable weather by growing very rapidly 
and they see it's only when unfavorable weather um, exists, like hot, dry weather in the middle of summer. And oftentimes what you'll see is trees with sustained growth, they'll, they'll actually lose their leaves early. The older leaves, they'll, they'll drop early when conditions become hot and dry. And you'll notice that if you've ever gone out in the middle of summer beneath, uh, say, a river birch or a tulip uh, poplar, yellow poplar, uh, maybe even a cottonwood tree, and the leaves are falling on the ground in, in the middle of the summer, and you'll be concerned. Well, don't be. They have uh, sustained growth, and they're just losing some of the leaves that are no longer needed. In other words, there's not enough water to go around, and so they have to abort some of these older um, leaves in order to keep the new leaves alive. Now, preform growth is different, though. That's when the primary growth occurs in spurts. So in, instead of being continuous, it occurs in spurts or flushes, then it goes through a resting stage. And during this stage then, uh, buds are, are then formed and inside the new buds, there'll be a set of new leaves that's forming, uh, begin, um, being produced. Uh, and then a follow-up flush will eventually occur, but that new flush may not be until next year. And such trees typically then do not grow quite as rapidly as those trees with sustained growth. So here's what I mean. Here's an example, we've got a, a, a red bud, eastern red bud tree, and it has it happens to have a zigzag growth pattern to it, but you'll notice that new leaves are continually emerging. We don't have a bud that's forming and opening up. They just emerge, 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 emerge. Now typically the distance between these uh, flushes gets a little bit smaller as the growing season progresses, but that is in contrast to the preformed growth. So here's a situation uh, with the southern red oak that's, that's grown, and it is now set bud, and it may rest in this stage all the way until next year before it flushes again. Sometimes you'll see a second flush if growing conditions are right, uh, you know, during the summer months, but uh, not always. Uh, so it goes through a, a resting period, sustained versus preformed growth. And uh, I mentioned the zigzag branching pattern, uh, that's common with elm and birch and willow. So some examples of trees with sustained growth, I've mentioned a few, but we've got the tulip poplar, birch, sycamore, willow, cottonwood, dogwood, and redbud. These trees are capable of continuing just to flush leaves throughout the growing season. But that's contrasted with trees with preformed growth, those that have to go through this resting stage where there's a bud that's formed and uh, pauses for a while. And that's oaks, hickories, beech, ash, cherry, pine, now, maple and sweet gum are a rare situation in that unique situation that they have both preformed and sustained growth, which is uh, unusual. So I want to talk a little bit about crown shape. Uh, as you might understand, crown is that portion of a tree that contains live branches and foliage. So we've got the, the trunk and then the living branches up there. Um, oftentimes, um, I'll refer to what's called the live crown ratio when I'm meeting with uh, homeowners or even forest landowners. Uh, and, and in LCR, live crown ratio is that ratio uh, of that portion of the tree with living branches to the total tree height. So in other words, if we have an 80 foot tall tree and 40 foot of that is in live branches, then it, it would have a live crown ratio of 50%. There is a correlation between tree health and vigor, of course, and the size of the crown or the live crown ratio. So. When a tree is open grown out in the yard, particularly when it's young, it might have an 80% live crown ratio. In other words, the branches come on almost all the way down to the ground. Uh, but in forest settings, what happens is, as trees have become overstocked, they compete with each other, they, they go up and up and up and up. The lower branches begin to shade out and, and die and, and are, are um, aborted from the tree. And what happens is that live crown ratio then shrinks to the point that sometimes you get in pine stands and only 10% of the tree has actually living branches in it, live crown ratio. And assuredly, when I bore into the tree and pull out a, a sample of wood out of it, a, a, bo, bo, a, a wood core, in other words, you'll notice the growth rings are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Chances are that stand needed to be thinned long time ago and the growth rate is shutting down. So continuing with crown shape then, it varies of course by species and can have these shapes. Uh, crowns can be oblong such as hickories. They can be round as beech, maybe oval in shape, which is 
uh, example, red maple, bay-shaped, uh, with an elm, in other words, they come up, they spread out like that, kind of narrow at the base, open up like a vase. Uh, a pyramidal, uh, shaped like a pyramid, in other words, like a loblolly pine, or even weeping in the case of birch. And this might not be important in a forest setting, but in yard settings, sometimes it is important. They want a certain shape crown, or they've got a certain amount of space that the tree can grow in, and they might need something like a pyramidal shape as opposed to an oblong or round or oval. And here's what I mean by that. Give you a chance to look at those, oblong, round, oval, that they shape, there's your pyramid, and then you, there's your weeping crown. So crown shape is influenced by the degree of apical dominance. So we've talked a little bit about the apicals at the tip, in other words, on the branch, and does it have a one main leader? In other words, apical dominance is that upward growth of the leader, that leading branch, at the expense of the lateral branches. If this is more dominant, then the lateral branches will tend to, to fall in line. In other words, trees with a strong apical dominance grow much faster in height than they do in width. So this has been kind of a, a short back porch forestry session. Understanding tree growth characteristics is beneficial for managing trees in both urban and forested settings. And this knowledge can, can aid it when you're pruning or stocking uh, aesthetics and just overall tree health. And there's the, the conclusion then, the survey. If you want to take the time to fill that out, that's great. Um, this uh, presentation uh, goes into greater detail in a publication by the same title, Tree Growth Characteristics. Uh, uh, it was uh, written by myself and Dr. Jennifer Franklin a number of years ago. So you can just Google that title and either one of our names, or you can go back to the uh, YouTube site and now post the URL uh, uh, on that. So thanks a lot. I enjoyed another session of Back Porch Forestry and have, have a, just a wonderful day. Dare I say a tremendous day.